I worry about my safety almost every night. I run when it's dark on the streets. I hold keys in my hands to use as a weapon. I pretend to call a friend to let them know exactly where I am. I change my shoes into sneakers so I can run. I roll the windows down in the taxi in case I need to scream for help. I cross the street when I see a man staring at me. And I try to walk in well-lit places. This is the reality of what it's like to exist as a woman, and my experiences aren't unique. At least one out of three women around the world have experienced physical or sexual violence, and that doesn't even include sexual harassment. We are seeing an outpouring of rage and grief in London over the murder of 33-year-old Sarah Everard and the fear that women across the country live with every day. And a brutal gang rape of a woman has shaken the collective conscience of the people of Pakistan. The two robbers allegedly raped a woman at gunpoint on Wednesday while she was waiting for help on the motorway after her car broke down. Well, Shira Isakov, that's the name of the Israeli mother who's just been stabbed 20 times by her husband after being strangled and beaten with a rolling pin in front of her one and a half year old son. At least one in three women consciously take steps to avoid being assaulted on a day to day basis. But what if there was a quicker way for women to get the help that they need when they're in trouble? I first understood the meaning of feeling unsafe 10 years ago. I uh, go with some friend of mine to a house party. When suddenly in the party I realized that one of my friends was missing, so I took my other friend and together we searched this house and we heard some weird sounds from one of the rooms. So we take a big a breath, open the door and uh, saw her half naked. Uh, struggling against two guys and as soon as we entered to the room the guys ran away and we saved our friend life. I realized that we can create solution to this problem because together we have power. This is Neta Schreiber. She's the founder of SafeUp. It's an app that allows women who feel they're being stalked or in danger of assault to signal their location and summon help from other subscribers. Any woman can download it for free on their phone, but they have to go through vetting to make sure they're bona fide users. So let's say I'm walking on the street. I'm standing here. I feel like there's something that's off about the situation. I can actually share my live location with a list of women that I've provided in the app, or I can be connected to an audio or video conversation with volunteer women to kind of get their reassurance and their guidance, right? Yes. Yeah, so we actually call these volunteers a guardian, and they are women that uh, guide and prepare and available to help you. If it's a regular situation, they just accompany you by the phone, by the video call. But in some cases, they can come physically to help you. If there is violence, they will uh, call the police through the app. In extreme situations, they can even record audio and visuals through my phone yes. to record evidence of a situation. Interestingly, about 20% of users just open the app and hold it in their hands for a sense of security when they're walking alone. Because one of the main issues that women face is the fear that they won't get the help that they need in time. In the United States, it takes police an average of around 10 minutes to physically respond to a call. Here in Israel, it's an average of around nine minutes, but these are numbers that can vary widely around the world. And when it comes to violent encounters from sexual assault to domestic violence, time can mean the difference between life and death. I think that all of us women know what it's like to be in a situation where you feel like something's off, maybe somebody's following you or watching you, but it doesn't seem serious enough to report to the police. Yes, and this is exactly why we create SafeUp, to give women the opportunity, the community network, to help each other in a real time and to take responsibility about each other and make sure that all the women in the world, are, they are safe. But the real question is, why do we need apps like this in the first place? This is just a band-aid for a much larger societal issue. Why can't we just feel safe? 